there is truth, that there is only one God. Yes, there is only one source. So of course that these, these stories can correlate because they come from the same source. Empower You Podcast is devoted to bringing real world wisdom and encouragement to our listeners. We discuss a multitude of life principles and the process from an economic, cultural, and societal perspective. We believe that through tough conversations and shared wisdom, we can pave the path and leave a ladder for the future. Subscribe to our channel and let us empower you. Welcome back to Empower You Podcast. My name is Kidboy Cooper, and I am so glad that you are here today. So let's get into this. Today is the first conversation in our second conversation series. This series of conversations is going to revolve around the theme of building successful behaviors and In so doing, we have to evaluate a lot of things, right? And so that is the the topic for this podcast, evaluating our habits. And our guest is spiritual advisor, Brianna Ellis. Now, Brianna Ellis started studying different religious ideas, spiritual philosophies, psychology, and learning spiritual hierarchy, mind science, and metaphysics. Uh, at a very young age, and her journey led her to document the process and then obviously start teaching others. Brianna completed her bachelor's degree in metaphysical science and is currently working to obtain her master's degree in metaphysical counseling. She founded And So It Is Counseling LLC, which was created with the vision to open the minds of everyone, really, to view spirituality as a personal, fulfilling connection with God. Uh, Brianna wrote and published a book, One Moment, One Day, One Lesson at a Time, which is a collection of essays to enlighten and open our minds uh, to the path of universal truths learned through her personal experiences. And it's written from the perspective of a traditional Christian turned metaphysician. I'm really interested in this conversation. We really kind of organically met, and I think it's going to be a great conversation. I'm really excited to get into this. Um, Thank you so much for being here, Brianna. How you doing? I am well. Um, I'm Brianna. I am a spiritual advisor. I am a minister ordained, ordained through the University of Metaphysics. Um, And I'm a regular girl who went through a journey. Um, My journey started with myself. Um, I was a Pentecostal Christian minister. And when life happened to me, I had to take my journey into my own hands. And from there, I gained my uh, bachelor's degree in metaphysical science. Um, I have written a book and I am a student of spirituality of mind science, of psychology, and of the self. Mm. You said a lot of heavy topics there. You said you were a Pentecostal? <laughs> yes, Ooh. I grew up Pentecostal, Ooh. yes. Y'all wear them long yes. skirts too? Absolutely. Yes. No For like the first part of my childhood, we weren't allowed to wear pants at church. Like that was still a such thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so... Um, yeah. my sisters, my family grew up wearing skirts and they all still do. None of my sisters wear pants, um, because they feel like really? it is, uh, immodest and it does not reflect their values. Yeah. And that is why they don't wear pants for anybody who is listening. Wow. You probably all know someone who doesn't, <laughs> um, it's not really yeah. that odd necessarily. It really just deter. It really is just a, a manifestation of, of the values that you have and the way that you choose to exercise them. So right on. That's right. So tell me a little bit uh, about your journey and how you, how you began to, you said, you know, when life happened to you, you had to take life into your right. own hands. Tell me about that yeah. just a little bit before we get into all the questions and stuff. Um, right. I just want to kind of know a little bit about your history 
and uh, what what has motivated your work these last couple of years? So my work is mostly spiritual work. Um, I believe that the self and the spirit are the same in alignment with God. And how that began for me was I started as a devout Christian. I was on the ministry team. I was uh, in the choir. I was on the praise team. I was a Sunday school teacher. And church and religion, it had become so much my identity. Um, I was married at that time. And when my marriage had went downhill, for me, my identity in the church also went downhill. Um, the way I explain it and how I was able to um, understand it was that they had basically picked his side. Mm. And so for me, yeah, and so for me, I'm like, well, my identity is wrapped up in this church and these rules and these people. And I had to learn how to separate church from God, which I had never had to do before. Um, for me, that journey took me away from my religion. I looked into different types of religion and different spiritual practices, which led me to mind science and uh, metaphysics. So for me, mind science is a, a little bit along the lines of quantum physics in that all things are connected and that everything has its own purpose and that we all have the answers. We just have to find them within ourselves. <laughs> so that's a whole lot to say that my work basically started with me. I had to find out for myself the what, the why, you know, what, why am I here? What do I want? What is my purpose and what is my destiny? And that wasn't easy. And I did find out that if I would have just gone down the, the line of Christianity alone, being scared to search and find who I am and what I believe, I, I, I don't think I would be as far as I am right now in my love for myself, my understanding for myself, um, how I project um, into the world. I, I feel like I became a more whole person a more rounded person because I was able to search and find different modes of spirituality and understanding for me. And I want to do that for everybody. <laughs> oh, wow. That's amazing. Uh, that's really amazing. Mm -hmm. I think one of the things that you said, um, I, I, I resonated with it a lot. You said that, um, you know, you, you, you gave yourself the permission to, to look mm -hmm without anyone else's constant input, without everyone else's life experience who are not you, you know, you gave yourself permission to, to look mm -hmm. and to figure out, does this really work for me? What about this is working and what isn't? We get very um, caught up, at least it's easy to get caught up, especially in church atmospheres, um, just blindly doing things that the church or the institution that you're of faith that you're following, however that plays out for you. Um, Those you, habits. Yeah, you just get <laughs> caught up just doing whatever it is that they want you to do or that they feel is appropriate, even though that may not be resonating with you spiritually. And I think that's dangerous that's right. because the more you stop being in touch with your own spirituality are you not also just learning to just pretend because now you're not even operating <laughs> on your own intentions and emotions so it makes it in my opinion now I'm not a minister you you're the you're the minister in the room here um but it just seems like it becomes a very ingenuine after time over time and that to me is the antithesis of 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 being in in sometimes toxic church environments, and so um, yeah, go ahead. No, I was I was agreeing with you, and the idea that you become you start pretending, and it's it's not just the mask of your thoughts and how you really feel, but it becomes a whole production, <laughs> like just. I mean, just the idea that you have to remain 
perfect and you can't make any mistakes. And if you do, you're doomed and damned. All of that stuff plays into a lot of falsities within yourself that you end up having to dig out, you know, those who do want to search and spread themselves, you know, spread their knowledge a little more. Yeah. And I, you know, it's, it's, I don't, I I believe that people should follow what they are passionate about. I believe people should follow (laughs) what makes sense to them spiritually. And so, you know, to anyone out there, you know, if something works for you, then it works for you. Um, I agree. But what I know in my own experience is that the farther I go into someone else's mind and ideology, the less in touch with my own intentions, my own uh, perspectives, my own knowing that I become. And there are so many things about myself along my journey that I've had to do that didn't necessarily make sense to someone else who who doesn't have the same inclination, the same conviction, right. the same purpose. And if you live your entire life trying to meet someone else's idea of who you should be, I think that limits God's ability to really move in your life the way that he wants to. And I agree. Yeah, and 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 I feel like I've seen that in certain aspects. I've seen people become so safe that they are not effective. I've seen people become so safe that they don't even want to adhere to the the to to their own convictions because they need someone who is so completely detached from the vision that that yeah. they have to validate who God is telling them that they are. And I don't believe yeah. that is constructive towards uh growth. That's not everyone's church experience, but I do I have I've experienced that. And so it's interesting that you started there you know, you went through a traumatic event or a life change, really, um, which. And I also. Go ahead. I also want to say that I still consider myself Christian. And I teach that people should have their own personal spiritual practice. So I consider myself Christian, but I meditate. I read the Bhagavad Gita. I read the, the Tao Te Ching. I read all of these scripts and I practice some of those practices and I say that to say that if your religious practice is working for you if you're feeling like you're growing if you're feeling centered if you're feeling like you are headed in the right place for your destiny then by all means continue in that way but I'm teaching the people who feel like there's something more that they need to be able to reach a little further within themselves to find. And mm. so, you know, to, to all religion, I respect all religion. I really do. I just happen to study them all. I don't think one religion is right. I think everybody is right. Um, I think it's a perspective thing. Yeah, that's really, oh, we could go round and round. I, I, I love these kind of <laughs> discussions because I think there's so much room. I think that's why they exist the way that they do. I think that's why yeah. from one, you know, part of the world to the other, the the religion, the the name of the belief system could yeah. be different. That's all. Yeah. But the principles are the same through most of them. The ones that I've experienced, yeah. okay? Like again, you're the expert. Me too. <laughs> Me too. Me too. You mm-hmm. know, and so it's yeah. just like, well then how can all of these people have the same intention? And just have a different way of approaching it based off of their cultural norms and the things that make sense to them. So the like, way I teach it. Go ahead. I'm I'm sorry. No, you're the good. The way I teach it is that um, if you think about the Bible, and no disrespect to any you know of our believers, but if you think about the Bible, it's like any book that has ever been written in terms that it was definitely inspired by God. So when we look at the Bible and all the religious texts, they are inspired by the same source. So Mm. all of this, that there, there is truth that there is only one God. Yes, there is only one source. So of course that these 
these stories can correlate because they come from the same source. So that's the way I teach it for people to not be so nervous and scared to venture out into looking into different, you know, stuff. <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. Oh man. Well, welcome. Welcome. We, we are, we are, we're in it. We're in it. I hope you guys really are, are taking this in. Uh, this is going to be a really fun episode. So uh, mm-hmm. let's jump into it. Uh, we're talking about evaluating your habits, right? Because we want to build successful mm-hmm. habits, healthy habits, habits that create and manifest blessings and balance and harmony and truth. Um, and all of these things might sound cliche because they are, but they're also just mm-hmm. the intrinsic human needs that we all have. So the reason they sound so cliche is because they are, because everybody wants that, right? You know what I mean? That's okay. And that's, that's okay. And that's okay. But how do we get there? And it's in our habits. Yeah. Our habits create a reality around us that will either help us get there or keep us that's from right. there. So right. my first question to you, uh, what would you define as a habit? So when I was thinking about this question, I kind of I kind of went into two directions. So I want to share both. Okay. The first one is our subconscious prompting those reactions that we have that become second nature to us. And then the second direction is our daily doings, the things that we just do every day, like brushing our teeth driving our car, all of these things are habits. And the way, the reason that I went both ways is because getting down to a habit is basically finding out where our habits root from. So Mm. (laughs) I'm I'm taking notes. We have different types of habits. (laughs) You know, like sometimes we get into the idea that our habits are just a bad thing or the things that are pointed out to us on uh, a daily basis, like those who bite their nails or, you know, things like that. Um, but our mind is a habitual organ. It's, it's doing the same stuff over and over again. Our mind are, is doing habits like helping us to walk, <laughs> helping mm. us to talk. All of these things are habitual. And so for me, a bad finding out what your bad habits are is a skill in finding out how you think. Hmm. So we, habits are twofold, and one is your just your daily doings, and the other is the prompts that you have that are dictated by your mm-hmm. environment, your culture, your upbringing, and these are the yes. things that determine your good or bad habits. Even though this isn't a living document, your habits are a living document. They're not set in stone. Yes, very dynamic, always changing. Yes. Ooh, always changing. Okay, all right, that's awesome. Okay, so how are habits formed then, and why is it important that you understand why those habits are formed? So I kind of want to take it away from our daily doings. That's just a a method to teach, you know, what habitual is. But let's go to what we would quote unquote our good or bad habits and that they come from our subconscious. And what is our subconscious? Our subconscious is what is driving us. It's what's used for survival. It's used for um, evolution and it's used for your ego. So, your subconscious is telling you stuff from experiences that you've had in the past. Your subconscious doesn't create new experiences. It, all it does is it tells you this happened before, it might happen again. And so for you, when you are trusted, when you, so your subconscious is going to go. It's an active thing. It's just going to be going. But When you are acting habitually off of your subconscious, it's a cause and effect thing. So, for example, um, when I get nervous, I bite my nails. The cause is the nervousness, the habit 
is the bite in the nail. Mm. And so in order to find out what causes your habits, you have to be able to trace backwards to find out how you're thinking. I used to have a really bad habit of biting the meat on the inside of my cheek. It's really <laughs> gross and weird and all of that. Um, but I did it ever since I was a kid. And um, one day I was just like, this isn't okay. Why am I doing this? And so I really, every time I did it, I had to think, stop and think why, you know, how am I feeling? I had to check myself, you know, what's going on? Are you good? Are you okay? And I'll find myself that I would be nervous when I'm commuting to or from work when I was in Seattle or things like that. You know, that's the way that you trace yourself back. And it's really just watching yourself, being mindful. Mm. Being mindful. Ooh, this is awesome. Okay. Um, there's so many <laughs> things that I want to say. There's so many things I want to say. I, I completely agree with, with you as far as um, you have to move backwards through your emotions. We're always thinking about moving forward, but you have to move backwards through your emotions, which is completely yeah. uh, counterintuitive. Because we yes. think progressively. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yes. So absolutely. We're creators. Right. So we're thinking about the next yes. move or the next thing, but the reality is we have to process our emotions backwards. Mm, mm -hmm. That is so I'm writing that down. Anyway. Yeah. It's 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 the idea of being a spiritual being in a human form. So our spirit is ready to go, go, go. I have a destiny. I have a purpose. But our human form needs to take time and needs to understand. That's the whole purpose of Christ was to be able to have a spirit in a human form to understand. And so that's why we have a lot of work as humans. It seems daunting and it seems like we're doing this generational work for our families and stuff like that. But it's because our spirit is pushing us that we must do that work because you have this something that you have to get out. So. Wow. Yeah. I suddenly do not feel nearly as crazy as I feel most days. Oh. <laughs> Be <laughs> well, because I... I very much resonate with with the feelings that you're talking about, the knowings, the the inclinations yeah. of wanting to move forward so fast because you see things differently than what is presented to you physically. But yeah. you have to work backwards through all of your processes, both learned and uh, uh, given, you know, both by your 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 upbringing and then also things you just pick up in order to figure out how to best move in that direction. Because what I'm right. noticing is that sometimes you just run into your habits. It's like being in a, a tiny, tiny closet, you know, where you're just <laughs> surrounded by yourself and you don't understand why or, you can't get out. Yeah. Or it feels like you're in a perpetual spin and you just can't seem to get out of it. I found myself in that place where I had to like really keep it real with myself about how I felt about things because you can't really go forward if you leave so much unanswered questions. You can't, so how do you go forward saying, I want realness, I want total God, I want total everything, but you've been so used to lying to yourself and not being honest and, you know, that means something. You have to be able to go back in order to go forward in, in a decent and honorable way to me, <laughs> in mm. my opinion. Right. Ooh. So so what are some of the um, indicators for realizing that you're in a circle, realizing that you're in the closet? Because some people do not realize that they are engaging in cyclical behavior. They don't realize that they're kind of in their glass box of emotions. <laughs> you know, they don't see it. What are some indicators yeah. that if anyone is listening, they can start to kind of um, 
be critical of their own habits as they are going through their daily life? What are some indicators? So one of the words that I think resonates with us from our ancestors is the test and the trials. Mm -hmm. When you find yourself (laughs) going through the same test and the same trial, then that's how you know that you are experiencing some sort of habitual behavior. And I'm going to say on your own part, Mm. (laughs) it's usually about you. (laughs) It's usually your test. It's usually your thing that you have to get through. And I'm also going to just be bold and say, people know when they're going through the same test over and over again. I think that the hard part about it is when people don't see um, a light at the end of the tunnel, then it's easier to just keep on in the repetition in hopes that one day you'll see the light at the end of the tunnel. But what happens is you have to create that light in, in in the tunnel. You have to create it. You have to help formulate it. You have to work with the power in you. To, create, to help kindle and create that light in order for you to have a reason to get out of these cycles that keep you in the tunnel. And you have to sacrifice for those too. I think that yes. is the that is the, the currency of change is sacrifice. Like you yes. can't get yes. out of one habit without letting go of another one. And sometimes mm-hmm. those habits that are holding us back are very enjoyable. And that is the other part <laughs> right. about habits. You know, some of them aren't Mm -hmm. bad to the naked eye, Um, but you know that they are limiting you in some way, shape or form. Right. Mm, Right. That's interesting. I'm taking all (laughs) kinds of notes right now because I think this is such an important topic as we, um, you know, everyone wants a great year. Everybody wants to have the best year of their life. Everybody wants to make a million dollars. And what I'm learning about any of those things is you are, you your life manifests what you put into yourself. So if you want to make a That's million right. dollars, you have to intake the information that someone who makes a million dollars intakes. If you want to be the mm-hmm. be- your best self, you have to spend that much more time addressing things that are keeping you from being your best self. And it's, it's not yeah. about doing more. It's about doing less of what is holding you back. Mm-hmm. Again, yeah. moving backwards, which is... Absolutely. Absolutely. Because your starting point doesn't start the day you decide that you want to be better. You started when you were born. So all the information, good, bad, or indifferent, is in you. And you, it's your job to sort through it. What can I use going forward? What do I want to use going forward? You know, what yeah. is going directly in the trash and we will never speak of it again you know those <laughs> types of right <laughs> those are the type of things that you have to do so. wow that's great that's great i'm learning a lot right now i'm oh, learning a lot yeah, thank you. this is very very helpful to me yeah. because you know um for myself i i i'm in a in a process of purging some things of growing other things of discerning where i need to be in life and how i can better serve with this podcast and with other things that i'm working on creating and um it's all because i have this desire to to leave a ladder to leave access to leave some mm-hmm. means of travel for the next generation coming up behind me. And I often say, you know, my nieces and nephews, um, but even children and young people who are older than that. And so what I'm trying to do is reach and and impact the people who they look up to, which is us, right? Other influencers, other business owners, other writers, authors, uh, uh, thought leaders, because we have to be on point. We have to create the consciousness that they're just going to walk into. Because some people Absolutely. can't lead until they see the vision. And, you know, biblically yeah. speaking, you know, where there's no vision, the people perish. And I don't think right Absolutely. now there's enough vision, especially, you know, 
when you, when you think about trends and how, especially with our community, right, with the the African American community, yeah. there's a lot of power there. There's a lot of uh, grace. There's a lot of talent, um, passion, uh, ability. But we also really need to be very very mindful of what the consciousness we're creating around ourselves. Uh- because it plays out I in think, the, the most vulnerable population, which is going to be the young people who are experiencing all these traumas and, and depression and all these other things. So um, this is all just so, 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 so helpful to me because this is my journey. This is me figuring it out. This is me putting things out into the world that I believe are important um, and working backwards through them to continue to, to internalize that same amount of growth. So this is, this is fantastic. It's your Bible story. <laughs> it's your, it's, it's, you know, like that's what the Bible was. Um, I reference it a lot because people respect it hands down. Like it's a book that doesn't need a lot of, you know, hype, but the Bible is just that uh, people who wanted to spread the word or this idea that these wonderful things can happen or have happened. And that's your energy. That's your destiny that's breaking out of you. So I'm excited for you. It's a beautiful thing. Today is the day and now is the time. If you have a good idea, good intentions, and are looking for a way to get audience and to get your great message out to the world, I encourage you to start your very own podcast. You would be surprised the amount of folks who are waiting to hear your content. My name is Kid Boy Cooper, and I have been an audio engineer for the past seven years, and I am offering one-on-one coaching to help you get through the beginning stages of creating your very own podcast. Please reach out to me and let me know how I can help you. My email address is empoweryoupodcast at gmail.com. We offer one-on-one coaching, a live masterclass, and even a 10-module course that will take you through the entire process of creating, producing, and distributing your podcast to your very own listeners. This is a great avenue to connect with your audience and to connect with people who are in need of your voice. Again, reach out to me at empoweryoupodcast at gmail.com and let's get your podcast started today thank you so much so um another question i have for you is it kind of goes into um what you talked about your breaking point was um and i kind of want to talk about that if you're if you're okay with it Uh, what habits did you have going into your your life change you know your divorce your 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 shift in in your personal and spiritual beliefs that led to the epiphanies that you had later when you started working backwards through what was happening Mm -hmm. um what were some of those habits that you had and how how did you overcome some of the things that um you then had to change yeah um so At that time, I was really young. I had gotten married at 19, and unfortunately, we were divorced by the time I was 22 or 23. And so at that time, I was a young single mother, divorced, and I'm like all over the place. I had no idea that I would be in that place. You know, like my whole everything had crumbled. My whole identity had crumbled. And one of my worst habits in that time was this this habit of blame, trying to find who was responsible for how my life was, mm. where my life was, mm. how I ended up here. You know, yeah. who was to blame, who was the combination of people to blame. Yeah. And that became a habit for me um, that that was a bad habit. And I think people who do endure poverty and trauma and things like that, um, because you do have that excuse, sometimes you can allow yourself to go into a, um, into a spiral of excuses. 
Um, and I think that's where I was. I was not realizing, <laughs> I was not realizing how great my life really was. I was not living in the present. I was living, you know, like we were just talking about, so ready to get to the future that I wasn't doing any of the self work that I needed to do. Um, and so it wasn't coming together for me. And so instead of me looking at me, I started, I tried to blame everyone I could think of. And I'm not saying this um, to be down on myself because that too is a part of the journey. <laughs> um, a lot of things, you know, you can't get to the other side without actually going through it. And so I, I share my stories and my shortcomings because you can't, it, it's inevitable. You have to go through it. And I definitely did. And it's, and as like low frequency as it sounds, it's definitely something that I went through where I, I wanted to blame my mom. You know, I never seen a relationship work. Um, I oh. definitely want to blame my husband, oh. you know, and, and these things are true, but it gets really sticky when you aren't taking real, you know, control of your own life, you know? Yeah. It's true aid. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and I know so, in, yeah. in your book, you talk about um, anger and I can't help but think that, <laughs> you know, anger gets associated with the, with the blaming of, of others for what's going yeah. on with you. You can't help but be upset yeah. with whoever it is, whatever entities are you assigning the blame to which becomes another layer yep. of, of uh, uh, misdirection away from the actual reason you're going through what you're going through. So that goes back yep. to that spiral of excuses <laughs> that you said. That is, yeah. That's a really great, I'm going to quote that. I'm going to quote <laughs> that. That's amazing. Thank wow. You. <laughs> okay. So what, what was your process in getting through that anger, getting through that, that um, the the spiral of excuses, uh, processing what was going on. I had to be real honest with myself. I wasn't. I wasn't being a hundred percent honest with myself about anything. And I find that people have the hardest time with that. It's easy to tell your sister, "Oh, you in a raggedy relationship. You chose him. You you know you need to do better." But it's so hard to tell yourself in the mirror, you in a raggedy relationship, you chose him, you need to do better. Or, or you, or tell your cousin, you eat too much, you need to push away from the table. Instead of telling your own self, you are choosing bad eating habits, you need to push away from the table. And so I had to do that. I had to be honest with myself. And, and, and it sucked because there's no, really there's no one to blame. I I made choices. I I made choices not to choose. <laughs> you know, I, I, when I chose that I wanted to just put my hands up, those were my choices as well. And when you take your life into your own hands and you realize that your choices are cause and effect choices, it makes you slow yourself down. It makes you take a little more stock into what you're choosing. Um, how you're thinking, what you're manifesting for yourself on a daily basis. And so for me, I just had to be honest with myself that if I wanted to change where I was, I needed to realize I'm the one who put me there. So mm. if you want to change who you are, you have to realize that you're the one who put you there. Mm -hmm. So, so how does that, how does that, I agree with that. But I'm also mm -hmm. thinking, so how does your environment play into those realities? Um, because we all grew up with habits and, and things that we really didn't, we just developed because we were young and this is what my family does. This is what we do. This is how we process emotions. This is how we deal with conflict. This mm -hmm. is how we eat. This is how we live. This is at the age everyone is when they get married. This is how many kids everyone has. Right. Like, so how do you reckon all of these things that are, that are not, they're not individually based on your own 
inclinations. They're just environmentally appropriate actions. How do you right. establish or, or even determine whether, you know, which is which? Am I blaming everybody else or am I just acting this way because this is what I know? Because this is what I, 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 I know, you know, what I grew up doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it has to be a, a little bit of both. It's, to me, it's all about understanding. So it's kind of like when uh, white people say all lives matter and the Black Lives Matter thing. It can be both. So for me, I had a, a very poor upbringing. And so a lot of things that I did subconsciously and habitually were due to me not having a lot. Right. <laughs> and so, right. And so in order to, to say, uh, oh, I'm used to being poor. So that's why in my mind, I just got a job at the grocery store instead of thinking I could do something better or mm. not better. I mean, I, not to knock any grocery store workers. I'm just saying that <laughs> in order for me to get out anybody, of poverty, Any of our essential workers, <laughs> we are not yeah. throwing shade on anybody. We're just saying that depending yeah, on I'm what you are saying. used to, you can be enabling yeah. habits that are not constructive for your own well-being. And I think that for Black people, and what I really want to teach to so many people is just because you haven't seen it, your idea of it is enough. So, for example, I grew up and I didn't see a lot. My, Me and my siblings, we didn't have a lot. Um, school time, we wore the same clothes, we didn't have a lot of shoes and all of that. But I decided that I wanted my children to have more. I didn't know how that was going to work. Like you had mentioned, like my mom, I dropped out of college at 19. Like my mom, I had a baby at 20. And so, yes, I, all of those things were true for me. But I decided that because just because I didn't see it in my own family that you could be successful, that you can, you know, be a, a technical support worker or a, a software analyst, just because I didn't see that was no excuse for me to not reach for it. Even if most of the days I was making it up. <laughs> I remember um, by trade, I'm a medical assistant, um, but I did an externship and I had decided that medical assisting just wasn't my forte. Mm -hmm. um, I was blessed to be able to do some work with IT. And from there, I worked my way up to be a software analyst, which allowed me the uh, ability to take care of my children good. But I could say I only seen poverty. And I did. But I used that as my stepping stool or my source to say, okay, I've seen this. I want something different. And it's just basically you allowing yourself to see and trust the inner promptings and vibes that come from within you. Because I do believe that we all have them. But is it in the Bible? <laughs> <laughs> right. And, then, and, and that's why, that's why we got to come and talk to me <laughs> and get you some spiritual... But and, and just because something, and so that's another thing that, you know, it's so scary that everybody it has to be validated by either a Bible or a preacher or a somebody else. Um, mm -hmm. I'm really interested in teaching that the God in you validates you enough. Um, and that's where you have your answers. Um a lot of times when I'm like just at my wit's end, I really just center myself and it really just works together for me, whether in a YouTube video, a friendly phone call, but knowing God for yourself and being able to just connect with God without any outside, anything else, it's just a jewel <laughs> and it's like a great tool. Um, to have. Yeah. Wow. That's incredible. 
Oh, oh there's so many things there that you said it's a really scary thing for everyone to be seeking validation from someone else or from mm-hmm. a text that is um, important, uh, depending on your faith. But that is also mm-hmm. very much based on your own relationship with God in order to interpret. So, you know, yeah. in, in, in my girl, in my upbringing, you know, you had preachers and pastors and but you were not supposed to question them about anything. And even if yeah. you did, um, <laughs> not that it wasn't like allowed you, like you were allowed to go and get answers or whatever. Yeah. But I feel like it was low key. You were marked with a red oh, flag. Yeah. <laughs> you, you're low key a problem child now because yeah. you didn't want, walked up Why to this man. That? Exactly. You, mm-hmm. you have a, a non submissive mm-hmm. spirit. We want to pray for that spirit you have. Yeah. You know, that's the devil work. Uh huh. <laughs> and I don't, while I do think some people are very mischievous and they enjoy creating conflict, I also think that every person has, has, um, a mission, a purpose. And Mm -hmm. sometimes just like what you said, it is absolutely out of the realm that anybody else has seen. Yeah. Period. So how is it? It's like me asking someone in it. Now I'm going to use an analogy, right? I've been reading this book. (laughs) (laughs) Let me, let me, let me preface this. Okay. I'm ready. (laughs) So I've been reading this book called um, The Richest Man in Babylon. And one of the things that he Mm -hmm. talks about in this book is how you really have to understand that you cannot allow your calling, your desires, your intentions, investments to be vetted by people who are not an authority in that space. Absolutely. He was teaching this guy how to... Uh, invest his money and so he told him to save a certain amount of his money and he did that and he he said oh well, i'm gonna i'm gonna make an investment i'm gonna do something with it and him and his buddy who was a brick maker uh he gave him some money and he was like yo i want you to go out of town and buy us some jewels and we'll start like trading jewels to people and selling and being a merchant right and he went back to his mm-hmm. his 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 counsel, the guy who had kind of got him started on this journey of saving his money and things like that. And the dude was pissed at him. He was like, why would you do that? Neither of you know <laughs> right. about jewels. Why would you not actually go to a jewel merchant and have them go evaluate what you're trying to do? But instead, just you and your right. buddy decided to take all of both of your money. All your money. Yeah. All and your then, resources. And I say all of that just to say, think about how many times we ask people, our parents or whoever, to validate ideas they don't know anything about. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And then we get so discouraged mm-hmm. and we don't want to do something because they're like, oh, well, my mom doesn't think it's a good idea. It's like, well, yeah. your mom doesn't know anything about that. If you go to someone and who is skilled reason. in that and they're like, ooh, I wouldn't do that, then, then, then maybe it really is a bad idea. But you're not even getting quality mm-hmm. information. And I think we do that a lot in the church. We expect the church yeah. to have a vision for us that fits God's vision for us. And I don't think those always happen. And and I think that church has the, um, I don't think it's a bad thing, but what happens at church is there's this one size fits all religion model mm-hmm. where everybody um everybody should shout when certain preachers say certain words and and if you didn't shout then i don't know if you're holy enough and Ooh. everybody should fast on the first of the year but if you don't fast the way i fast then you're just not holy enough for me and it makes people think if i'm not religioning like them Oof. then i'm wrong right but no one has the courage to say I'm going to stop even dealing with this idea that there is a certain way to be. And I relate that to the I, your ideas, things that God puts into your heart and your spirit to do, to have and to be. It may be something that there is no blueprint for because you are the blueprint. 
Ugh. It's you. Ugh. You know? And so when you think like that, you trust God, you trust yourself, you trust your vision because that is God. You, your vision, everything is God. And once you trust it and you align yourself in that direction, you don't you no longer need that validation or you no longer need this, these ideas that mm. you need this step or this or this person does this for you and that's how you get this next step. But that's not how it works. You are you are the creation. You know, it's you. You're it's you, all of it. So Wow. Ooh, you're talking that talk right now. People are gonna be mad. <laughs> We listen to anyone who who is who is a believer who has a a, a special faith that they practice. Um, this is this is. I really hope you're not viewing anything that we're saying as 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 an attack on you, or no, because no, it's no. not. This is all about evaluating no. your habits and how different environments, things that you are conscious of or unconscious of affect your ability and your outcomes because there's a lot of folks who go to church every Sunday mm-hmm. and they're very very stuck they're yeah. stuck in habitual I was habits one of those people. Mm. I was I was one of those people yeah mm-hmm. and so you know it's 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 about evaluating what's really working and what's not and that's how we get to these, these, you know, we all say successful, you know, again, we all have these ideas yeah. that we want for ourselves, but it's that working backwards that nobody wants to do because it challenges no. your, your mental and emotional norms, you know. It challenges your mom. It challenges your grandma. Ooh. What they said was right. You know, it challenges, challenges everything that you knew to be true. That's hard work. Yeah. That's emotional work. Yeah. You know. So how do you mm-hmm. how do you help people get through this in your profession with your book? How mm-hmm. do you help? Uh, how how do you take people on this journey? So I really believe um, that our thoughts dictate everything. Um, the Bible says in in the beginning, um, God um, God. No, in the beginning was the word and God was the word and the word was God, excuse me, meaning that the the word, excuse me, the logo meaning for word is thought. So in the beginning was God's thought, right? And so, right, because think about it. Was there some old guy with a long beard in nothingness, creating things? No, it's a thought, which you can go deeper, which we don't have time oh. for, but in quantum <laughs> physics, we talk about <laughs> energy and stuff like that. So I teach people about their thoughts. I believe that that's where it begins. Um, our consciousness, um, there is no consciousness without the you. So me and you aren't having a conversation without me being conscious that I'm having a conversation with you. It's kind of like if a tree falls in the forest and nobody's there to hear it, did a tree fall? Nobody knows because no one was there to say a tree fell. Okay, so our thoughts are what is the basis of all that we are. And so the importance of, th- of going back is to think about why you think the way you think. What we think is manifesting our life as we know it. All of our thoughts are creating. We are creators because we are made in the creator's image. That's what the Bible says. That's what a lot of scripture texts say. And so (laughs) if we don't think like we're the creator, then we are letting our ego and our subconscious beliefs run amok in our life. So you have to take on your position as the creator for your life. And I teach people through meditation because it does take work to go backwards. How to find out what are you thinking? Why you think like that? Um, What are better modes of thinking to manifest differently? And things like that. 
Wow. I know I said a lot. I'm sorry. No, don't be sorry at all. You better not apologize. <laughs> that is uh that is all very, very, very good. Very, very good. Um, I don't know how anybody else feels, but that's really, really good. Uh, I think the just the concept of working backwards towards the truth rather than you know leaping over it leaping into it like it's behind you and that is what right. defines your movement forward oof there's so much there that you said there's so much like yeah anyway um i can't go into every, all of it because we'd be here all day um but thank you so much for for walking us through that because um yeah, your thoughts your your mind is always the key to your spirituality, yeah. to your finances, to your relationships, yeah. to to yeah. everything. It's your mm-hmm. mind that writes it the is. story. It is. Wow. It is. Uh, okay. It's perception. <laughs> All of that. Like how you perceive things, that's a really big one. Um, I had to learn that one. Like what you perceive things as is totally up to what's in your mind. So a lot of people are walking around with this perception based off of how they feel about themselves. And, you know, that can go either good or bad. (laughs) Right. Depending on how you feel about yourself, you know? Right. That is, that's Mm -hmm. big facts. That's big facts. Ooh. Okay. (laughs) So tell us about the book you wrote. Um, tell us about the book you wrote and does it help us with this stuff for anyone who is listening uh, and who is as engaged with this content as I am, I want you to know exactly what's in this book and why you should go get it because this kind of information, this kind of, um, content conversation, uh, can really be life changing and it can be a breakthrough, for you Mm -hmm. Uh, because again it goes back to the mind and if we're not conscious and taking a creative role in our lives and the way our minds work how can we overcome habits that are that are keeping us from getting to that position of self-actualization so tell us a little bit about your book and then we have to do a thought exercise before we end okay (laughs) So um, the book is called One Moment, One Day, One Lesson at a Time, and it's subtitled Cultivating Your Personal Spiritual Practice, because that's something that's very important to me. And it's a collection of essays um, based on topics that I had either a hard time with during my journey um, and or either things that I just had a good time learning about during my journey. Um, and they're based off of everyday things like life, love, finances, money, um, things like that. <clears throat> and the book basically is my take on going through my journey regarding these things, um, such as time, um, <laughs> such as happiness um, and love and things like that. I talk about the resources that I use. Um, although these may be new to a lot of people, I think that it's a good way to get. Yeah. Hold on one second. I don't want to miss too much. I think your hair, your your locks might be hitting your microphone. Uh, oh. There you go. There you go. I'm sorry. Is this better? That, yeah, that's much better. You're good. I was like, I feel like okay. I hear something, but I'm not sure what it is. It's okay. Go ahead. I'm 100% okay. in it. Um, but it's just um, my take throughout my journey, um, using different resources, how it was made clearer to me to understand. I feel like understanding is the biggest thing that we miss out on in religion. Um, and spirituality is the way that you gain understanding. And I was able to gain a lot of understanding using different religious practices. And this book just talks about those different things that I learned um and different techniques to help you through those same processes wow one day one moment one lesson at a time 
That is amazing. So they can find this on your website, um, on Amazon. Where, where can we find this book? Um, so you can definitely find my book at my website. My website is and so it is counseling.com. Um, all one word. Um, you can definitely find it anywhere where books are sold. Um, Amazon, Google Books, and um, Apple Apple Books. Um, and you can also um, find me on Facebook if you want to find copy. I do mail out signed copy. No, right. <laughs> Facebook or Instagram. Uh, and so it is with IV for um, Instagram. That's awesome. And and you do coaching and things like counseling with people who may be like, I yes. got to talk to this lady. She is like speaking my <laughs> language. I need yes. her. Yeah. So if anybody is interested, I teach meditation. Um, I can do a one. I do one on one courses and I also offer group courses. Um, I know with the pandemic, it's very hard for people um, to be able to go out and do things. Um, so I go to your home um, with your you and five other people so that we're COVID safe. <laughs> and uh, we, I go over a guided meditation. I teach people how to meditate. And I can guarantee that you'll have a meditation experience. Definitely. So. Wow. So all of this information will be in the show notes, how you can get a hold of Brianna, how you can um, purchase her book. You can uh, get any one-on-one -on -one coaching or group coaching that you might need. This is super valuable, life-changing information, uh, philosophies, practices. I think back on my life and it really, really boils down to so many of the elements that we have discussed you know, how others perceive who you are, your core beliefs and who you are, what you deem is acceptable, acceptable based off of your environment, um, who validates you and whether or not because of that validation or lack of validation, you then decide what life you want to have. Like there are yeah. so many things that are, 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 are pivotal to your growth and development um, that are just coming out of everything that you're saying. So uh, I'm very excited. Um, and I really hope that you all go and get this book. Um, and maybe we can sit down and go through it together uh, because it's, be it's worth it. It's worth it. Oh my goodness. All right. So at this point, um, I got to let you go at some point. But before we do that, <laughs> before we do that, we have to do a thought exercise. So, um, yeah. Brianna, do you have a thought exercise for us? I do have a thought exercise and I want to leave your listeners with something that they can take with them, a skill, something tangible that they can take with them. Thank you so much for listening to empower you podcast. All of our thought exercises will be available on empower you Please don't forget to like, and subscribe to this podcast and leave us a review and five stars. Thank you again so much for listening. And I'll see you over at empoweryoupodcast.com. That's love. Thank you so much, Brianna. Really, really appreciate you, you coming. Thank you so much. Yeah. I was just going to say, I really appreciate you for having me, for being such an awesome person. I know it's our first time meeting, you know, but... The whole experience for me has been really great. And I really appreciate you for being just open and, you know, letting the universe allow us to do great things. So I appreciate that. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you so, so, so much for spending time and, and giving us some of your expertise. Um, it's, you. a, it's, it's really great and so, so valuable. Uh, everyone, go check out One Day, One Moment, One Lesson at a Time. Um, all of the information on how to contact Brianna, how to get the book will be in the show notes. We thank you so much for being here and for listening. I will talk to you a little bit later. Peace. Empower You podcast is devoted to bringing real world wisdom and encouragement to our listeners. We discuss a multitude of life principles and the process from an economic, cultural, and societal perspective. 
We believe that through tough conversations and shared wisdom, we can pave the path and leave a ladder for the future. Subscribe to our channel and let us empower you.